Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Trivedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati. Now in a chromatography system which is actually a integrated system where you have the multiple components uh, put it into a machine and that can be used to enhance the efficiency as well as it can uh, improve the purification. So it has multiple components. You have a solvent reservoir, so the component number 1 is a solvent reservoir. Ideally you can have 1 or 2 reservoirs. In some cases in some of the machines you can still you can have even 4 reservoirs. So the purpose of having the 2 reservoir is that the first reservoir can be used to equilibrate the column whereas the, the other reservoir can be used to generate a gradient. So in that case for example you can fill the A with the buffer uh, and the B you can use and fill it with the salt and that is how if you want you can actually make a gradient between A and B with the by the mixing to these two you can be able to make a gradient of this salt and that can be used for the chromatography techniques. Now these two uh, reservoirs are attached to the pump. The pump you can have one or two pump which means you can have the pumps uh, dedicated to A, you can have the pump which is dedicated to B. Uh, different types of pumps are people are using in chromatography system. For example, you can use the peristatic pumps, you can use the syringe pumps or you can use the infusion pumps and in some cases you can use the high power and high pressure pumps. Mostly these pumps are based on the pressure level required to perform the chromatography and accordingly we, you can use the chromatography at low pressure as well as the high pressure. So based on the type of pump which you use in the chromatography, the, the chromatography could be of low pressure chromatography where you, you will use the pelstatic pumps or you can have the middle pressure chromatography where you will use the syringe pumps or the fusion pumps or you can use the high pressure chromatography or high pressure pumps where you will use the pumps which are made up of steels. Uh, now after the pump you have the mixer chamber, the, the purpose of the mixer is to mix the buffer received from the both the pumps to form a linear or a step gradient. So the mixture mixer is nothing but a kind of a magnetic stirrer. So in the mixer what you have is a chamber which actually has a bead and as soon as it receives the liquid from the two uh, chambers or two reservoirs it actually mix them in a such a way that it actually makes the linear or the step gradient and then this liquid can be delivered into the column and it can be used for the uh, different types of chromatography techniques. As per your requirement you can have the uh, linear gradient either the upward linear gradient or the downward linear gradient. Now next to the mixture you have the sample injection port. Sample injection port allows you to inject your sample. So in most of these uh, chromatography system you cannot be able to inject the material directly into the column you can use this sample injection loop and the sample injection loop is nothing but actually a valve where you, you can use a syringe to inject the sample and that sample actually goes and fill into the loop and then uh, when you give the command to the system it actually loads this material into the column. Now next to that sample injection loop you have a column, a column could be made up of, of glass or steel. 
So depending on whether you are using the low pressure column or middle pressure chromatography system or high pressure chromatography system, you have the option of using the column which is made up of, of glass or to the steel. Now next to the uh, column, now the chromatography is over, the sample is going to come out and then it will be analyzed by a detector. So, the next component is detector. In the detector, the it is actually a online monitoring system. So, the illusion coming out from the column goes to the online monitoring system to test the presence of analyze based on the different properties. So, the detector detector could be UV visible detector. So, you can put a UV visible spectrophotometers. So, you can have the UV visible detectors. You can have the fluorescence detector. So, that actually will uh, measure the fluorescence of the molecule which is coming out from the column or you can use the uh, RI detector. So, that will actually is going to uh, measure the refractive index or you can use the molecular weight or you can use the MALDI as a system. So, in that case the this machine is going to be called as the LCMS because it is actually going to do the chromatography and at the end what you are going to see is the molecular weight of the molecules and so on. So, you have the choices of different types of detector which you can put and that detector is going to detect that particular physical property of that particular molecule which is coming out from the column and then the detector will give that signal to the data recorder and analyzer. So, in the data recorder and analyzer you will see the profile of the eluent with respect to the measured properties in a detector and it can be plotted, plotted in a recorder. This recording only we have called as the chromatogram. So, the property is being plotted against the elution volume or the elution time and that you can actually monitor in a online system. So, you will see as long as the protein is coming out, you can actually be able to collect the fractions. Now, this detector is also collected to the fraction collector. So, as soon as you will see that some compound or some product is coming out, you can actually ask the machine to collect that particular fraction and that will be collected into the fraction collector. So, in the fraction collector you have the different types of glass tubes which are being kept and these glass kept uh, tubes are uh, allowed you to, uh, to collect that particular uh, fraction or that particular protein into a separate tubes. Now, this is all about the theoretical explanation of a chromatography system. But when you see a chromatography system in your laboratory or when you see a chromatography system, the operation of these chromatography system is very, very different from the, the description just I now I have given. So, for this purpose, we have prepared a small demonstration of the chromatography system which is present in our, in our laboratory and the help of this demonstration, we are going to show you how to operate the chromatography system, how to connect the column, how to connect the loops, how to inject the samples, how to and as you know that most of these chromatography systems are being operated through a interface through computer. So, you can also use different types of softwares to operate the machine as well. So, with all these we have shown into a small demo clips. In this video, we will show you how to operate a PLC instrument and the basic uh, principle laying mechanism of how, uh, separation of the proteins using a PLC. A PLC nothing but fast protein liquid chromatography. We can say it is a uh, derived version of HPLC. Uh, the main difference between HPLC and uh, FPLC is FPLC can only be used for the uh, separation of the proteins and sometimes small molecules also if we have uh, columns available. But in HPLC, we can use columns for separation of small molecules. Uh, Suppose uh, if you have enantiomers that also can be separated using HPLC. The columns what we will use for uh, HPLC and FPLC also differs. In case of FPLC, 
we will use plastic columns but in case of uh, HPLC columns we will use steel columns because the main reason why we are using like this is if you use uh, stainless steel columns in FPLC because of the salts and uh, high concentration of the salts and uh, different uh, materials we are using it may corrode the steel so that's why uh, there may be uh, improper uh, separation of the component which we want to separate so that's why we will use uh, only plastic columns in this one the separation of the proteins in through F H F PLC is based on the size and shape of the protein so if you have like in uh, gel filtration chromatography or size exclusion chromatography in all those mechanisms like uh, size exclusion gel filtration can be applicable in FPLC also so it depends on uh, what column you using so if you want to purify uh, histone proteins you can use nickel NTA column prepackaged column suppose if you if you want to only separate high to low molecular weight proteins you can use any gel filtration column suitable for your protein but the principle behind the separation is same so these details of like uh, size exclusion or gel filtration we are shown in previous video in this video we will show how this instrument can be operated we are in our lab we are using octopure this is from g health sciences so all the component whatever we show it is uh, similar in other instrument or other companies instruments also but only the architecture of the instrument changes so uh, let's see what are the parts uh, it contains so this is the instrument it is connected to uh, a system for observation purpose so in this system it contains uh, this uh, stationary phase this is the column this is the mobile phase that means buffers this is the area where we will keep all the buffers so it starts with the pumps actually so these two are pumps this one pump and two pump these two sets whatever buffers are coming from this buffer tray it will enter here okay these pumps whatever the pressure they are getting they can be regulated here this is the pressure monitor this so once here the pressure is monitored it will go to mixer this is the mixer where two different buffers suppose if you are using uh, if you are purifying uh, uh, through nickel nta column so in that case you need imidazole in a separate uh, buffer prepared and one is the equilibration buffer in that case uh, if you want to elute that protein particular uh, histone protein you have to mix both the buffers a and b for instance so those buffers can be mixed here once the mixing is done it will directly goes to the uh, inlet loop so once it entered into inlet loop it will go to uh, this chamber where it it can be connected to the column so the top portion of the column it will connect here we will show you how to connect the column in uh, um, in in coming video so after that whatever it comes it will enter here uh, it will enter here and it will come directly into the uv chamber where the eluted component will be detected so starting the instrument uh, there is a power button uh, right side of the instrument you have to just turn on that instrument then you can see a white light is blinking here that means the system just started so after that we will go to uh, this software part for analysis of any elution 
we can use uh, this it comes with the instrument it is the unicorn software we use for analysis purpose so just double click on that one and it will take you to the software so it will give you three pop-up windows one is method editor another one is system control and evaluation classic so this is system editor where you can see chromatograms and uh, the other one is evaluation classic where you can analyze your chromatogram just go for system control the first thing we have to do is uh, connect the instrument so here you can see the connected uh, instrument octapure 25 so just say ok now it will connect the system so this will give uh, different uh, we can change uh, different uh, commands using this software just go to manual execute manual so this is the manual instruction software or dialog box where you can change uh, things so here uh, different parameters you can change uh, through this pop-up window uh, like uh, uh, pumps uh, flow path and various parameters such as monitors just to go to pumps so here you can change the system flow so uh, we can keep up to uh, 20 ml uh, if uh, there is no column connected so normal condition you we can keep 5 ml also so you, you just say insert this thing in order to execute it by system now here it is monitors very important thing we have three wavelengths here we can monitor at three different wavelengths so your choice you can give uh, so we are giving 280 250 9 254 just insert and say execute so it started you can see the green path is highlighted and also chromatograms appearing in the chromatogram area so it will give three different uh, chromatograms so one corresponding to blue that is 280 nanometer for tryptophan tyrosine fluorescence second one is 254 nanometer for rna or dna related and third one is 215 for peptide so here we can see the path of the flow uh, how it is connected starting from buffer a so here buffer a and it will go through the pump uh, and uh, mixing through mixer it will go to all the way to waste so here uh, different parameters we can change during running we can change b also if you want to change b you just say start pump b so see we can see highlighted area if you stop the program it will save automatically see you can see uh, some dialog box appears preparing for new run this is software introduction this is these are the buffers we are going to use for this demo uh, the buffers need to be filtered through 0.2 micron filter and also degassed. For uh, degassing purpose, we will use uh, bath sonicator. So it will remove any uh, any uh, hair or air bubbles present in the buffers. It will remove those things. So we are using uh, most common buffer that is phosphate buffer with having pH 7.4 and uh, this is the uh, milliliter water and this is 20 percentage ethanol all the buffers were filtered through 0.2 micron uh, filter paper and also degassed so uh, we have washed already uh, the system already being washed so now what we will do we will connect to the column so here uh, 
precautions need to be taken while connecting this thing so if you are if you have any air bubbles through these loops or the uh, or the piping system it will directly enter into column which will destroy it so to prevent that we have to make sure all the loops and pumps got washed thoroughly and then we will connect in running condition uh, before connecting the column uh, we have to remember few points this column whatever the bits are there this is in a 20 percentage ethanol so if you directly connect it already ethanol is there whatever the flow rate we are giving it will give more back pressure so the bit between the uh, the distance between the column filter and the beads a uh, settled beads may increase so that will reduce efficiency of the column so what we will do we have to change this pumps into water so we changed into water now we can connect it to the column here also some of the precautions need to be taken if you are using chilled buffers okay uh, suppose you need cold buffer so that means uh, you have to bring those all the components of the system to uh, the temperature which you want to use for your purification otherwise if you having a chilled buffer which directly enter into column that may clog or precipitate some of the uh, uh, salts present in the buffer inside the column so that will also reduce the efficiency so this is also need to be uh, taken care uh, while running the FPLC before connecting the column we need to adjust few parameters so here is the software system flow I am keeping 0.5 ml per minute since we are going to connect the column so if the flow rate is more then the pressure alarm may come so after that we have to oh, set the monitors so this is also I am going to set system flow 0.5 insert and now we have to set alarms at what pressure you need to uh, get alarm so I am keeping this point uh, 8 is fine so once it is done you can insert then execute so next here this is the column connecting portion so where here this is this is the upward portion where we have to connect with the column now we are not using column so just we have to go to the column we just click this one column down flow so from top to bottom now you can see highlighted one so you cannot directly connect to the column first you have to fill the buffer or uh, water in this loop so that there is no air bubbles just open the top of uh, upside of the column okay with this buffer itself you just directly connect after connecting you have to take out the uh, lower portion of the column otherwise it may bust also but it is not the case because uh, if is if there is any uh, high pressure you will get alarm so here uh, this is the bottom portion of the alarm uh, you can see the buffer here if you if the buffer is passing through the column 
so as we can see uh, there is a fill up of water in this thing so once you see complete fill up of the this loop or this knob you can directly insert the lower portion once you see the buffer filling in you just have to connect with the downward portion so now the column is connected to the system and you need not to touch anything everything will be operated on the software so here uh, see once the column is connected you can see there is a change in the uh, different uvs and conduction of the uh, buffer this is uh, this is uh, the red one is the sorry this gray one is the per conduction and uh, the green one is the concentration of the and uh, these are three different uvs now we are washing with the water so after once uh, completely we removed uh, 20% ethanol then we will equilibrate in the uh, buffer so the the main purpose of the equilibration is uh, suppose if you are prepared your protein solution in a suppose say phosphate buffer so you have water you are not equilibrated with the uh, phosphate buffer then you cannot expect good resolution or good, good separation of the proteins and also the proteins may not be stable in the other condition like in water so they may degrade or they may not be useful if you are uh, uh, interested in the enzymatic reactions so that's why we always do equilibrate with the equilibrate the column with the same buffer which our protein of interest is desired so this will also helps good resolution and uh, keep the intact of the structure of the protein so we are indirectly we are providing similar conditions uh, for the protein so it will behave in a native condition so we completely washed out the ethanol whatever present inside the column now we will equilibrate in the uh, phosphate buffer so as you can see here the conductance is completely uh, comes to zero and uh, we can see the completely flat line flat signal corresponding to uh, uv280 so that means uh, there is no ethanol inside the column in addition to that we already washed uh, 30 ml of uh, water so the total column volume uh, inside the column is it is around 25 ml so we also washed with 5 ml extra so uh, we can be sure that it is completely removed now what we have to do is we have to just pass the things whatever we set already without disturbing anything so here we can see a pass symbol you just pass then come here and change the pitch to buffer so once that is done we will reset these things to continue mode so we can see it is again activated so uh, we have equilibrated the column using the equilibration buffer so as we can see here there is a stable line corresponding to uv280 and uh, there is no uh, other illusion coming out so with this we can confirm that uh, uh we equilibrated the column properly so it's time to inject the protein solution and analyze it so for injection purpose this is the port where we are going to inject the solution 
protein solution and this is the loop whatever we inject through this uh, injection valve it will be stored inside this loop the size of the loop depends on how much protein you want to inject and uh, the column capacity so we have uh, 1300 hr column also it is uh, it can it can be uh, used up to uh, you can inject up to 1 mm so in this column in this column we cannot inject that much if you want to inject we have uh, the company people might also give this kind of loops so this we will we will connect as shown in here and we will use for the injecting the protein solution so what we will do is we have to set few parameters here so here flow path so injection valve you have to show it inject here so insert this one okay once that is over we just have to insert the protein solution and execute the command so as we can see here uh, the chromatogram here uh, the protein is entered so it uh, uh, 13 ml of retention volume so if you want to uh, say if you want to uh, identify the protein molecular weight or determine the uh, unknown protein molecular weight you have to run this kind of uh, analysis like uh, you need to be uh, known that uh, what is the protein molecular weight, known protein molecular weight so which is available actually i have uh, been commercially available so you have to take that protein and uh, just inject based on that you have to uh, construct a calibration curve between log molecular weight and the KV that is partition coefficient, which is calculated based on the uh, elution volume subtracted with void volume divided by total volume subtracted with the void volume. That will give partition coefficient. So whatever you will get, you will get a uh, graph straight line, and based on that straight line, uh, you can get unknown proteins uh, molecular weight. So that can be discussed in uh, gel uh, size exclusion chromatography video now we will show you how to analyze the results so uh, this is the uh, software used for evaluation purpose evaluation classic so you have to go to file open chromatograms so you have to locate where your file is uh, kept just open that one and say okay so here uh, you can uh, you are seeing so many things uh, this one correspond to, to pressure and conductance so you can customize the things like what you want to see in the his, uh, chromatogram is only uv2 it so you just uh, keep those things and uh, remove all those things okay and here also it is showing 380 you don't need 380 you want to uh, take up to 65 so you just go and change the uh, y axis so so like so you can see this is the chromatogram peak is very sharp so you can also uh, integrate the peaks so this is uv2 it integration so just say uh, so it will give the uh, exact retention volume of the each and every peak how many peaks are present 
so here we can see 12.86 this is the major peak what we have so uh, with this uh, you can analyze the results so if you want to calibrate you have to calculate retention volume for all the proteins whichever you are using for calibration and construct the calibration curve be, uh, between partition coefficient and log molecular weight so with this you can uh, identify unknown proteins molecular weight so in this particular FELC demo we showed you how the instrument works what are the different parts and what are the precautions we need to take while running the instrument and how the software works and how to uh, analyze these things so another point uh, we forgot actually this is the fraction collector so while your protein is editing suppose your protein is editing at 12 so started at 12 you want to collect fractions from that time onwards till the end of the edition so what you can do you can use fraction collector also from main window this is the fraction collector it will automatically moves so here it contains the sensor but you need not to touch anything okay so uh, in uh, main system control here fraction collector there is an option for fraction collector how many fractionation you need to be done uh, when you need to stop fractionation and uh, how much feed to uh, fractionation outlet valve all these things you can set there in addition to that uh, you can also set system uh, gradient flow uh, suppose you want to elute uh, a protein with the gradient you don't know at what concentrate at what particular concentration of imidazole if you are using uh, nickel nta column or at what particular concentration the protein higher or lower molecular weight uh, eludes so with this you can uh, just adjust the concentration and length you have to give in uh, suppose 60 minutes so what system will do it will over 60 minute of time it will increase 0 to 50 percentage so you can do this one reverse gradient also so first you will give uh, 15 and uh, time you can keep uh, just uh, uh, suppose one minute so from time uh, when you start the system it will st starts with the 50 percent of the b and reduces to zero so uh, all these things will make you familiarize how uh, the system works with the fast protein liquid chromatography so hope uh, these things will help you to achieve your goals in your research thanks for watching now we understand how a fast protein liquid chromatography works so after using the instrument we have to uh, from buffer to water we have to change the valves because if you are directly keeping in the 20 percent ethanol it may the ethanol which are present in the buffer and uh, the proteins or salts present in the column they may get precipitated and clog the column so it is a better practice first you change this uh, buffer system to water then wash thoroughly whatever the salts present inside the column it got eluted then again you change to the 20% uh, uh, ethanol for uh, preserving purpose that need to be remembered for uh, a better performance of the system now the chromatography can be performed in two different ways the partition chromatography or to the adsorption chromatography in the partition chromatography the analyte distribute themselves into the two phases liquid stationary phase and the mobile phases the major advantage of this chromatography is that it is simple low cost and has a broad specificity it is further divided into liquid liquid chromatography or bonded phase liquid chromatography the examples of this partition chromatography is cellulose starch 
or silica matrix. Whereas in the case of adsorption chromatography, the matrix molecule has ability to hold the analyte on their surface through a mutual interaction due to the different types of forces such as hydrogen bonding, electrostatic interactions, van der Waal, etc. And the examples are ion exchange chromatography, hydrophobic interaction chromatography, affinity chromatography and so on. So the difference between the partition chromatography versus the adsorption chromatography is that in the partition chromatography the molecule is going to distribute into the two phases but the molecule is not going to adsorb. Whereas in the case of adsorption chromatography, the molecule is going to be partitioned between the two phases. One of the phase will be the matrix phase where the molecule is going to adsorb through the non-bonded interaction. For example, the hydrogen bonding, electrostatic interaction or van der Waal forces. So with this, we would like to conclude our lecture here and in our subsequent lecture, we are going to discuss about the different types of chromatography techniques and their uh, usage in terms of the purifying the proteins or protein uh, molecules. Thank you.